Southern Illinois and Creighton, a rivalry that has nothing to do with geography and everything to do with on-court success. Far and away, the two best programs in the Missouri Valley in the last half decade. They square off today at the SIU Arena. Quick look at this series history, and here's all you need to know. Last six years, eight NCAA bids between these two schools combined. Dave Reps and Doug Gottlieb as we take a look at our Star Wars. Yeah, well, Nate Funk leads Creighton in scoring and rebounding, second in the conference in scoring, but he's going to have to match up with Darren Brooks, returning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year. Check this out, Dave. Leads the team in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals. I would say he does it all for the Salukis. He is an unbelievably complete player. We've had the pleasure of watching him now. This is the third time in the last two years, and he is phenomenal. Keep this in mind about Brooks. 4.5 assists per game. That would be the second best total in Southern Illinois history. And oh, by the way, as Doug said, he leads them in everything else. As Creighton brings it into the front court after winning the tip. This is Tolliver now Funk. So there is Funk. Also a very complete player. Now a near steal, and that's something we're going to see a lot of from Southern Illinois, an outstanding defensive team. As we take a look at the lineups for Creighton, we told you about Funk. Tyler McKinney, a remarkable story, has overcome two cornea transplants. More on him in a bit. In addition to Brooks for the Salukis, keep an eye on the freshman Matt Shaw coming off a career game against Indiana State as Funk misses. And the rebound is pulled out of there by Creighton. They get another shot at it, and very quickly missing is Johnny Mathis. So Southern Illinois with its first possession. And Southern Illinois likes to spread the floor, penetrate, get mid-range jump shots. Not a terrific three-point shooting team, although they can shoot it. The idea, though, is to score and pick up man-to-man -man full court pressure. See how they do in the half-court set here. Brooks coming off the flu earlier this week, but says he's doing fine now. That was Shaw, now Brooks again. Shot clock down under 10. Tatum. Quarter jumper is left short by Brooks, and the rebound goes to Creighton. On the break, Funk with a nice feed to Tolliver. You know, Nate Funk had to play the point at some point last year when Tyler McKinney was lost for the season because of the eye difficulties. He struggled with that position, but see now as a two guard, because he's played the point, still has the ability to penetrate and kick. And, and this is where Creighton becomes effective. They score, they have several different types of full court pressure that not only slow the pace, but lull you to sleep. They try and get steals, get runouts if you throw a lazy cross court pass. The problems there for Southern Illinois, but again, very deliberate in the half court set. Now Shaw. Again, the shot clock well under 10. Stetson Hairston misses the three, and Creighton's McKinney rebounds. Here comes Tyler McKinney. Now Funk. Quick pull up on the baseline, and Nate Funk gets his first two. The Natives already getting restless uh, with Carpendale. Yeah. Well, they've won 50, they're 52 and 1 here over their last four years. So they expect the Salukis to step up and play well at home, but I like Creighton's philosophy. We're gonna slow the pace, we're gonna get in our matchup zone, make them hit shots for the perimeter. Warren misses badly, the rebound underneath is put in by guess who? Darren Brooks. The 21 straight home wins for Southern Illinois, that is the fifth longest streak in the country. They've won 33 straight conference home games. McKinney. Big three for Tyler McKinney. Yeah, he's really stepped up his game. You know, the team started to lay off him and double on Funk when he dribbled the ball. And they had 14. They're getting win over Northern Illinois, just real, excuse me, Northern Iowa earlier this week. They tied his career high. Tatum. Going to shoot a three of his own, and he hits it. Jamal Tatum. Seven five Blue Jays lead. Tolliver swings it in the corner to Mathis, and Mathis hits a three. Now the Salukis are trying to double off every pick and roll, but Creighton has great spacing. They can really shoot the ball from the perimeter. They're the best three-point shooting team in this league. It shows why there. Six players with at least 21 threes. Vanderbilt, the only other team in the nation that can say that, as Tatum swings it in the corner. Now Hairston misses. Battle for the board, and it'll be Saluki basketball. And Creighton is a team that really likes to spread the floor, shoot jump shots, and when you get the ball into the middle, now watch, off the pick and roll, here's the double, extended on the court, McKinney steps through, nice little ping passing, into the corner, and Mathis can hit that shot. 
Creighton four of six from the field early on. And on top ten to five. Tatum. Erskine. Passing the open shot to Shaw. And the freshman gets his first two. Uh, he's averaging nearly 10 points a game since he's been inserted into the lineup. And this is where they want to maul you. As soon as you step across half court, that man-to-man -man pressure. And there you see the steal. They average about 10 per game. Hairston lays it in and draws the foul. So Southern Illinois getting the crowd going early here, but it's still 10-9. Creighton, defense turning into offense. You'll see a lot of this from the Saluki. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb back in Carbondale. Good tight game early on against two teams that know tournament success very well. Southern Illinois, three straight at-large bids, Doug. And at this level, a byproduct of that often is you lose your coach, and this is their third coach in as many years. Yeah, obviously, Bruce Weber, he came here, then he left and go, went to Illinois. Then Matt Painter came in. He was Bruce Weber's assistant, but he had played at Purdue, and so he goes back to Purdue. Then Chris Lowry comes back, who was here before, but then went to Illinois with Bruce Weber, then returns to a place where he played, and now he's the head coach, the fourth youngest head coach in all of college basketball. First head coaching job for Chris Lowry, and his numbers have been very impressive so far. As they finish off the three-point play, and now we've got a 10-10 game thanks to a 5-0 Saluki's run. Funk, off glass, no good, following it up, and Nate Funk staying with it. Follow-up basket by 10, Nate Funk. So four points now for Funk. And Creighton back up on top, 12-10. Creighton doing a nice job of mixing and matching. Now they're back into man-to-man, -man, trying to play solid defense. But they use that press to not only get steals, but especially slow the pace of Southern Illinois' transition game. 15 in the game is Tony Young. Also an outstanding defensive play. Yeah. Shaw inside gets surrounded. Misses, goes back up, but it didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock was down to two, but Shaw draws the foul. Well, Dane Altman's just done a phenomenal job. They've reached seven consecutive postseason appearances, five of which the NCAA tournament obviously struggling this year, especially with young and uh, kind of inadequate inside talent, especially rebounding the basketball. His teams are never out-rebounded, and this year out-rebounded by a nearly three point margin on a game-by-game -game basis. But both these teams have been struggling a little bit with the rebounding as Shaw hits that one. This is a guy they hope will be part of the solution for Southern Illinois anyway. Good young freshman player. Played for the Centralia Orphans. Winning his high school program of all time about an hour and a half or so up the road here in Southern Illinois. Well, they call them the Orphans probably because with that type of winning record, if you lose, you feel like an orphan. They did get a win last night. Actually, a loss last night, I should say, against Carbondale High School. It's been a tough year yeah. for the Orphans. They're well below 500. Well, the natives well, must be restless. Yes. Well, when you, you lose a player of that Number caliber. Three, Jamal Tatum. Foul goes Tatum. on first Jamal first Tatum. That's his first. That's the first team foul on Southern Illinois. Winning his high school program of all, all time. time. That's impressive. Of all time. Only one school can say that. I, by I, definition. I guess. Yes. And it's the Orphans. Of course, I'd like to see the statistical backing of that, but that's what it says. Well, yeah, guide, we're going to go with to see it. the database. Yes. Nate Funk wow. hits the three, so Nate Funk off to a good start. He's got seven early points. And it's really impressive to see Nate Funk come out and play so well. Last year, we got a chance to see both these two teams. Of course, they played at the Quest Center in Omaha, and Funk was playing the point. He played quite poorly. Young misses the reverse, and we've got a hell ball. Now Funk is taking his game to a new level, but as you see both of these coaches, it's kind of an interesting contrast in style. Here's the, the dean of coaches in the Missouri Valley in Dane Allman, and then the rookie in Chris Lowry. What's interesting about Chris Lowry taking over this job, third head coach in three years, but it's all the same system, but three very different personalities. As you talk to a guy like Stetson Harrison, who he recruited, just came out of the game, just, you know, our relationship has changed some, especially because I can't call him nearly as much as I used to. Uh, Jamal Tatum said to Lowry a little while back, you know, you've changed. You aren't the same guy who recruited me. I'm going to tell my parents. A little bit tougher than he was when he was an assistant. Friendly roll there. 
for Tony Young. And Tony Young is a guy who can step out and shoot, but watch his on-the-ball defense. He will just take the basketball from people. Great on-the-ball defender. Has a tendency to fall asleep away from the basketball, but he is vicious with his on-the-ball defense. Mathis falling out of bounds, throws it off Randall Falker, and it's going to be Creighton basketball. Falker is 14. Just checked in the game, a freshman out of St. Louis. Which means when Matt Painter went to recruit him, he had to hit the Falkers. <laughs> You've been waiting to use that. I've been saving you? that all day. Now Mathis. Shot clock down to 15. A three on the way. Rims out. And Falker comes out of there with the board. Now Young. Has it knocked away from behind. So that time the Creighton pressure pays off. Mathis. in the game he wears number 30 also in for Creighton 15 is Kellen Milliner looks out top again the shot clock winds down to 10 and again Southern Illinois comes out with the steal this time it's Lamar Owen yeah they just have a great ability to get their hands on basketballs and deflect them, and then the speed and quickness to go recover the tip basketballs. The problem is at times they become stagnant offensively and they take their time dribbling the ball, dribbling, setting up, and now turning it over. But Falker zigged and Young finds the zag, but Young with the block and they call him for the foul. Well, the turnover by Young and he tries to make it up for his teammates. You see him trailing the play and that is not a foul. Uh, Got to agree with you. Pretty clean to me. Kind of call you normally would get at home, you would think. You would think, especially when you're 52 and one over your last four years at home. So here's Johnny Mathis to the free throw line. Guy who was overlooked coming out of high school in Louisville, went to one of the more storied programs in the country, male high school. Played with three Division One players, including Larry O'Bannon of Louisville. Louisville star running back Michael Bush was also on that team. So. Mathis not very heavily recruited, ended up going the Juco route for one year, and then came to Creighton. And that's what Creighton really likes. They like to bring in junior college guards, especially athletic ones, even athletic bigs, but when they have them for three years, because this offensive system, which is kind of derivative of, of Johnny Orr's offensive system at Iowa State, takes players about a year, year and a half to learn. You see Mathis has really stepped up his game year two. They force the turnover. Now Mathis nearly turns it over. It's on the floor, battle for it, and it is a hell ball. Basketball. It's going to be Creighton basketball. As we remind you tonight, a full day of college hoops on ESPN concludes with ACC action. J.J. Redick and Duke going to Maryland to take on John Gilchrist, Nick Painter, Medley and company. Duke and Maryland also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator, DirecTV, the Dish Network today. Rivalry Week presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN tonight, 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Duke coming off the very impressive win earlier this week against North Carolina. And that's the love affair game between uh, J.J. Redick and the Maryland fans. It's a nice way of putting it. Nice feed down low there, and Dana Watts gets his first two. Well, Creighton a couple years ago with Kyle Corver had a similar incident with the fan behavior here at Carbondale to the point where last year when we came to Carbondale, there was actually a list of rules and way, ways in which the Southern Illinois Athletic Department did not want their fans cheering, much like they did when Kyle Corbin was in school at CU. As a code book for cheering. Yes. That's something you see very often. They have extra security on hand for this game tonight because Creighton has been treated fairly poorly here in the past years, so they just want to be sure. As the former Mr. Sucker in the state of Kentucky, Lamar Owen, gets his first two. Yes, and the dog pound loves Lamar Owen. Dog pound their student section. Great group here early. They gave you a standing out. I thought it was for you. I wasn't sure. McKinney. This is long and Darren Brooks tough for the rebound. Young out ahead of the pack and he lays it in. Tony Young now has five off the bench. Well, here's what you can't have. A point guard taking a three-point shot in the corner and no transition defense. Just spells doom and disaster if you have no one back on defense, especially against the Salukis. For two in the game for Southern Illinois is Mike Dale. Missed the last few games with an ankle injury, so back on the court. Has been a valuable contributor for them this year. 
And SIU's pressure forces the turnover. It's going to be SIU basketball. Well, less than a year ago, Tyler McKinney feared he might lose his eye. His remarkable journey just ahead. Big food to make. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Cisco Systems. This is the power of the network now. And in part by the all-new Odyssey from Honda. A great idea made better. Back in Carbondale, 1919 ball game. We take a look at Tyler McKinney. Young man who was sidelined much of last year due to a right eye infection caused by a microorganism, a canthamoeba keratitis, which strikes two people in a million, can lead to blindness. His vision was completely clouded over. He literally could not see his hand in front of his face. Had to put drops in his eye every 20 minutes. He needed two corneal transplants. The first one was unsuccessful. The second one did take in April. Doctors told him it would be a year until he could play basketball again. And remarkably, he is back on the court for Creighton just mere months after that. Went six months without touching a basketball, would come to practice, but wasn't allowed to participate. It's really amazing how he has, throughout this entire process, throughout this entire drama, has really maintained a cool head and said, look, I had to sleep. I had to catch up on my sleep because I was having eye drops put in every 20 minutes, let alone try and catch up on my schoolwork. Moats missing, missing short, and Creighton coming, or Southern Illinois, I should say, coming the other way with a two-point lead. I mean, you assume a guy, when he sits at home for six months, can't play basketball, that, you know, he does something with his time. He watches TV. He couldn't do anything because he hadn't slept in months. Uh, he said he was literally a zombie. I mean, just waking up every 20 minutes. He now gets one drop every two days. Vision is at 2025. He works with blindness prevention groups in Omaha. As Young commits the foul there on Johnny Mathis. And you think he's valuable for this team? Check these numbers out, Dave. 69 and 18 career record as a starter. 10 and 9 in games without it. That's that's the, that's the, the difference in with Tyler McKinney without. And you can't really you can't really quantify with points or with assists. Yes, he leads them in, in assists, and he averages six points a game, but it's a steadiness, he's a good defender, and he just leads this team in every possible way. Nice interior pass there to Jeffrey Day, and Day gonna go to the line. He got fouled by Randall Falker, his first. So Day to the line. Young man who played a couple of years at Washington, as we see him go up strong there, Doug. And he's going to try and dunk the basketball, and he is the, uh, an unwilling big man. Unwilling big man is, is how he was described by his head coach. And it's kind of interesting because Dana Altman is one of these guys that really likes tough, hard-nosed players that get after it, grind defensively. And Day is a talent. He's long and athletic, but really wants him to be more physical. Moats out of the corner misses. Mathis battling for the board. He has it blocked from behind by Falker. Day gets it, and it's blocked. Here comes Lamar Owen. One-on-one -on -one with McKinney. Owen. Hold for the offensive foul. Now, what a play. Hey, Lamar Odom, a, a, a great athlete, but in transition, really, Tyler McKinney has no chance to stop other than setting his feet, taking a charge, and he does so. It's a big, big momentum play. The transition game, and, and you know, the Blue Jays have had trouble here with transition defense. Only one man back. You need to usually have two, but yeah, that's a charge. Pretty easy cut. Tenth charge McKinney has taken this year. That leads the team. And uh, Doug, you were talking about quantifying what McKinney does. Their scoring goes down about six and a half points a game without him. And that's one of the ways that it manifests itself as Jeffrey Day throws down the jam. And keep an eye on what Creighton is doing is they're slipping their big men to the post off strain roll action because Southern Illinois wants to jump out double or hedge so hard that it leaves the man who's the roller or the slipper in this case open. Shaw. Tied up on the way up by Day. It's going to be Southern Illinois ball. Now Creighton has come in here and decided, hey, we're going to battle. Interesting about Creighton is they're five and four on the road. They have a quality road record in this league. They've just lost home games, which never used to happen for the Blue Jays in the past. Shot clock did not reset on that, so it's down to ten. Tatum works around the screen. Tatum misses with an air ball. 
Chavo saves it, so now there are three seconds to shoot. Tatum gonna try it again. Not there. Brooks the offensive board, and he gets knocked out of the way up by McKinney. First foul on Tyler McKinney. As we remind you that tomorrow, ESPN2 has women's college basketball regional coverage. It's going to be a great day. February frenzy on ESPN2 among the games in three Duke and Maryland, and also Kansas State going to Oklahoma. And you'll be there in Norman? I will be. Yeah. Should be an outstanding ball game there. Two of the better players in the country. Deanna Jackson, Kendra Wecker going head to head. But I'll tell you what, we're going to have great games all over. Bounce around to the most compelling games. Should be an outstanding day. It's always a lot of fun. Do this every February. Good way to get you ready for the women's NCAA championship, which of course every game in March on the ESPN family of networks. Brooks hitting one of two, so he has three points. And it's 22-22 game. Foul away from the ball going to be called on Jimmy Moats. And Creighton trying to get in their half-court sets, trying to set solid screens, but Moats with a moving screen. And you don't want to have a turnover when you don't even get a look at the basket. Uh, you know, they're playing so well offensively when they don't turn it over, but a offensive foul, turnover throwing into the stands, all the same. Two of the best teams in the Missouri Valley, certainly over the last five or six years, Southern Illinois and Creighton going at it. Dave Revson, Doug Gottlieb with you. We're in a building where Southern Illinois has won 33 straight conference home games. Have not lost one since 2001. Stetson Harrison hitting the three there out of the corner. He now has six. Knocked away from behind. Again, a steal. And Brooks can't convert on the other end. So here comes Creighton in transition. Mathis. This is Funk. Funk hanging and leaves it short, but it's tipped in by Moats. So it's a one-point Southern Illinois lead. Shaw, the freshman, backs in, and he gets called for the walk. A tight game right now in Carbondale, 25-24, Southern Illinois on top of Creighton. unknown rivalries in college basketball has been everything we hoped it would be Southern Illinois up by one on Creighton these two schools between them eight NCAA tourney bids in the last six years the rivalry Doug Gottlieb is because they're both really good uh, they've both been really really good I mean four consecutive regular season championships between these two teams the Salukis with three in a row they've never won the conference tournament so they've always had to get in as an at-large but look they have Wichita State coming back into Carbondale later on this season but that can't be for the conference championship if they don't win tonight against Creighton. See Nate Funk leading the way so far for Creighton. The Blue Jays basketball there. Good defensive game so far. I haven't seen a lot of inside offense. Just four points of the paint total in this game. All coming for Creighton, and that's what we expected. It's a Creighton team that gets about 75% of its offense from the perimeter. For Southern Illinois, it's about 66%. Stetson Harrison leading the way so far for the Salukis. And this is Harrison with the basketball. here for Creighton they started 7 and 0 wins over Missouri Ohio State and Xavier since then though they've struggled just 8 and 9 Southern Illinois won the game in Omaha by 6 shot clock down to 3 jumper on the way from Warren he is no good and Milliner who high jumped 6 10 in high school comes out of there with a the rebound and yeah, great athleticism and his ability to take the ball to the basket as well shoot the perimeter jump shot is something that he comes off the bench and brings for the Blue Jays 
they have a chance here. Five minutes to go in the half to put Southern Illinois down, maybe on the defensive coming out of the break. And that's something you wouldn't expect, especially as well as Southern Illinois has played here this year. Josh Starwatch going head to head. Funkin Brooks. Oh, a three on the way there is no good by Dana Watts, Miller. but they get the good rebound. And Milliner's just so athletic. Mathis, no good again. It's Watts, the offensive board, and the nice little reverse. And Dane Watts catching it, keeping it high. Only averages three boards a game, but hey, yesterday his coach was all over. Crash that offensive block. Jamal Tatum answers on the other end. And Dane Altman will not be happy as they get it stopped, but then give up an easy bucket. Speaking of giving up easy buckets, <laughs> Anthony Tolliver. Did, did I say Dane Altman? I meant Chris Lowry won't be happy. I got you. Okay. All right. Randall Parker checking back in for the Saluki. Interesting pace in this game. It, it, it's almost as if both teams are kind of slugging it out, picking up full court, slowing the pace, and all of a sudden they'll score in bunches and give each other two, four, six points in a row, and then they'll go back to slugging it out again. It's one of those games, it's almost like a football game where it's uh, battles between the 20-yard lines. That's what we've seen. We've seen a lot of action just trying to get the ball across half court, and then the game slows down once they get it across. Look pretty deliberate offensively. Now with Shaw trying to set on-ball screens, they're looking to overload the weak side off of the screen roll. When you run a matchup zone, you can screen roll, especially if you have a guy like Shaw to step and shoot. This is that shot, but it goes out of bounds off of Blue Jays, so it'll be Saluki's basketball. And on a previous possession, you saw that Southern Illinois trying that weak side overload. What that means is they're screening on the ball on the left side of the floor. Here's Darren Brooks with the basketball. Here comes the on-ball screen. On the weak side, you have a guard on the wing. When the wing, when the corner man comes up to pick him up, he dishes to the corner. And Stetson Harrison gets a wide open three. Well, they work a beautiful inbounds play. Matt Shaw finishing off the alley-oop. Stetson Harrison gets called for the foul then. As SIU tries to pressure, and you see Chris Lowry, his frustration. The first-year coach here at Southern Illinois. I told you took over for Matt Painter, who is spending one year as... The heir apparent at Purdue, and he'll take over next year for Gene Cady, guy who we played for in college. So down eight, Funk. Milliner. And Watts has come alive. A ah, beautiful offensive series. Just running their stuff to perfection and giving up to Creighton because they haven't allowed the Salukis pressure to take them out of their half-court sets. Talk about this is a pretty good Creighton road team. They have struggled at home this year. Tatum turns it over. I'd say the building in Omaha, they have a beautiful new building there. It's almost big. so big, it doesn't give them a home court advantage. As Watts misses the jumper, and here comes Southern Illinois. Not so much the case here in Carbondale. It's 9,600 right on top. Again, just one loss in their last 53 home games. Jamal Tatum now has seven. And the sophomore, that's what he does. He comes in and scores points. He's now a starter, but last year, as a freshman even, fearless, would come in, just constantly look to jack shots. And, hey, this has been a guy he's, that uh, Chris Lowry's actually worked on shot selection, increasing your assistant turnover ratio, and, and limiting the number of poor shots he takes. Well, Watts was feeling it, misses it out of the corner. Here comes Stetson Harrison leading the charge for the Salukis. Now Brooks, relatively quiet. Hairston, right to the hook. Stetson Hairston throws it down. How about that? Told you Stetson Hairston could score it. Now in double figures with a great move to the hoop here, Doug. Well, a miscommunication by Creighton as they all gather around Darren Brooks at the top of the key. He's a little pump fake and go into the basket. This is the type of energy play that Dana Altman wanted his team to limit. You can't allow this crowd to get into the game, and they've done such a marvelous job for the first 17 minutes of the first half of keeping this crowd, with the exception of the students, sitting on their fans. 33-30 Southern Illinois. This will get them going. You look at Stetson Hairston, a man who went to prep school at Bridgeton Academy in Maine, coming out of high school in Belleville, Illinois. A bit of an off-the-court problem earlier this year. He and Mike Dale suspended for the first three games of the year. Involvement in an off-campus fight. 
both ordered to perform 100 hours of community service. And uh, Hairston, very frank about it when we talked to him today, he said, look, I made a mistake. I'm paying for it, and I appreciate the way it was handled. He said he thought Chris Lowry did absolutely what he should have done. And it's been uncomfortable, though, as you were talking about, Doug, because of the relationship between Lowry and a lot of these older players on the team. He was kind of a confidant when he was an assistant. Yeah, but knowing what Chris Lowry has gone through with his family, someone we'll talk about a little later, he said, this is a man I respect, and if he has to suspend me, then i got to set out games I was the one doing, doing wrong. And so many times you see players blame their coaches when they're suspended. This wasn't the case. Now he blamed no one but himself as Jeffrey Day gets called for the foul off the Creighton turnover. It's Southern Illinois on top by three in Carbondale. David Amber getting set for the Century 21 halftime report. 19 top 25 teams in action today, including Illinois, trying to stay perfect against Wisconsin. A crazy finish in the Big East. You won't believe what happened to the Irish against the Panthers. We'll show you that as well. College game days on the road. Maryland and Duke, you can't have rivalry week without that matchup. We'll preview their game tonight on ESPN. Back to Dave and Doug, guys. Thank you, David. We look forward to it. Here it is a three-point lead for Southern Illinois. And Certainly Chris Lowry knows that Illinois team very well, assisted for three years under Bruce Weber, including the last one at Illinois. Been a chaotic year for Chris Lowry. Three-year-old son, Kahari, has cerebral palsy. And the day before Lowry's coaching debut, Kahari had an artificial valve for draining placed in his brain. Had to have the shunt adjusted a couple weeks later. His 15th surgery of his young life. That is remarkable. Less than a week after the season started, his wife Erica gave birth to their fourth child, the daughter Jasmine. Erica had been on bed, bed rest for five months, so Lowry was holding down a lot of the, the duties at home as well as here. Uh, coaching the basketball team. Then Jasmine contracted a, a viral disease in her lungs in her first month. She had to be hospitalized. She's now fine, but I'll tell you, Doug, a tough time for Chris Lowry. Yeah, and all these hospitalizations took place in St. Louis, which is about a two, two and a half hour drive from the Carverdale campus. And so he'd leave practice and go immediately to the hospital, spend time there. He was on the phone, whether he was doing recruiting or talking to his, his staff. But, uh, you know, it's one of these, um, you know, massive responsibilities for a young head coach to take over a program, especially one that's been this successful. Then you add to the fact that he's got not one, but at, at one point, two sick children, and his wife was on bed rest before she had her baby. It's just an amazing story, and he's held, handled it with as much class as, as any guy possibly could. Well, he said basketball really became the sanctuary yep. for him. This was kind of his escape, and as Stetson Hairston was saying, you know, all the troubles he had at home, he never, ever once brought it to the court. As Tatum with the shot clock winding down, misses the pull-up, battle for the loose ball, and guess who gets it? It's Tatum with a fresh 35. Hairston, now Brooks, he's been relatively silent. And he misses the three. Here comes Mathis leading the way for Creighton. There's a perfect example of what Matt Painter said about Brooks last year. Best player inside three-point range in the country. Just when he gets beyond that step, he's just not nearly as good a shooter. This is Brooks outside the line. He's 35% three-pointers on the year. Nice, nice pass, pass to Falker. And a foul, going to go against Nate Funk. Wow, great look, great look. Both teams are doing a tremendous job of emptying out that lane because both Creighton and Southern Illinois want to hedge hard on the pick and roll. And here you see the, the pick and roll coming. Tyler McKinney, tough defense. There's the high hedge. Nice little bounce pass on the pick and roll. Both teams now with six fouls. So they'll be shooting a one and one on the next one. After the refs confer now, they're going to give it to the Salukis. I would say Dane Altman not exactly happy with the overrule from the sideline official. That's a safe assumption. This is a great league. This is a great league, great place to play. You know, with the exception of a place like Carbondale, most are middle-sized city like a Wichita, like a Peoria, like an Omaha. Great basketball fan. Had three teams in the tournament back in 1999. Two teams every year since. As Doug mentioned, Southern Illinois, three straight years as an at-large team. Eighth in the RPI this year, so if we're going to get at least two, as Lamar Owen misses it out of bounds, loses it out of bounds, I should say. 
But you got to figure Wichita State and Southern Illinois, barring real collapses, Doug, should probably be in the dance. Yeah, with Randy Burns and with Campman and you know, the three, and Jamar Howard, the three senior stars for Wichita State. They're a tremendous team. They still have to come back here to Carbon there, though. And as we've seen, they won 52 and 52 and one over the last four years. It's just tremendous. 33 consecutive home wins in conference play. Difficult place to win, obviously. Tyler McKinney getting called for the charge there. Now this is uh, it's a tough league to win on the road in. As you said a lot of really good arenas. And this has been the toughest one at least recently. And you watch for Jamal Tatum to probably come off a high screen looking to shoot the ball. He will pass it's something he does more of this year than last year. But he's the one guy who has that bravery on his chest. He'll take any shot at any time and he has the green light to do so. Well, let the shot clock wind all the way down to eight. Tatum. Wow. And now you see what? Ten points now for wow, Tatum. Wow, Darren a steal by Brooks, and that's what he does so well. <laughs> Darren Brooks changing the momentum right there with the steal. McKinnon misses the half-court shot, and SIU heads into the locker room with great momentum. Uh, yeah, but just devastating for Creighton. I mean, Darren Brooks only five points, but the steal right before the break. Jamal Tatum going one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, this is a two-point game with under 10 seconds. Jamal Tatum hits the bucket, and then that's why this guy leads this, le this, this team in steals, rebounds, assists, and points. He does a little bit of everything. Now a seven-point advantage. He's on the verge of passing Larry Bird on the Missouri Valley Conference all-time steals list. Let's go to David Amber, seven-point SIU lead. All right, guys, welcome to the Century 21 Halftime Report. Hope you're enjoying the last game in a quadruple header here today on ESPN2. We do have some NBA news to pass along. The Minnesota Timberwolves, well, the time is running.